This is the space of real numbers. So imagine that you have a, uh, imagine you have a number line. This number line is R, because R refers to real numbers. <coughs> now imagine you have a Euclidean space with two dimensions. In that two-dimensional space, there's a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. How many pixels are there in this space? And by pixels, I mean continuous points. Don't, well, don't we have to have, go to like Planck's constant or something like that to see what the, most, uh, the smallest finite? In the physical world, yes. In mathematical theory, there's no Planck's constant because you can go infinitely small. Okay. So the way we do it is we take the real number and all the, the set of all real numbers, because all the places you could be in a number line, and multiply them by the set of all real numbers. And now you get R squared. Does that make sense? It's the set of R, all real numbers squared, makes a two-dimensional space. So in mathematical notation, when you see r to the n, that implies an n-dimensional uh, Cartesian coordinate system of continuous values. OK. So we're saying that any function in r to the n, which basically means anything, any number of dimensions, any size space, as long as it's continuous and follows the normal mathematical rules we're used to, Cartesian, Euclidean type distance here. If there's some function in that space, under mild assumptions, so here we're waving our hands, we'll get back to those. Uh, I lost the point. Can approximate. Can approximate, there we go. That's the big, that's the big verb. So neural networks can do any function. That's a pretty bold claim because that says right there that they can do this which is pretty boss, right? Well, um, wow, that word went out of style. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> well, the definition said continuous, so it could do that. Oh, hey, this one's not continuous. Well, it can anyway. I'll show you. Um, well, I mean, arguably, you could just connect this with a straight line right here, and that's the same thing as a discontinuity, isn't it? Well, it's approximating it, anyway, because there's no point at which it isn't right because it's a perfectly vertical line. Nah, it's just notation. Um, OK, so this was first proved by George Sybenko in 89. Here's a proof. Math, math, math. There you go. It is now proven. <laughs> OK. Um, I don't quite understand this proof, and if I stared at it long enough, I still probably wouldn't. But I'll show you the intuitive version of how I can show you that neural networks are universal function approximators, and then you'll believe me. Is that pretty reasonable? So let's do that. Um, <clears throat> let's go to food plot. This is just some random website that plots things. I'm going to plot 10h of x. This is the uh, hyperbolic tangent function. It's a trigonometric function, and it looks like that. And we use it a lot in artificial neural networks. So just to remind you of what artificial neural networks are, basically every one of these units is a model of a brain cell, and a very, very bad model of a brain cell. All they do is some number of numbers go in, and they sum them up. Well, they're multiplied by these weights. They sum them up, and then they run it through tan h, the hyperbolic tangent. And then we do it again. All these, the numbers that come out are multiplied by these weights. They're summed up in the unit. Then we do take the tan h of it. That's what a neural network does. It's just a nasty math formula. But it's interesting if this formula can represent anything, isn't it? So here's a tan h function. Let's play with this and show you how it can be manipulated. I can add one to shift it upward. Are you impressed? <laughs> I can add two to shift it even more upward. I can subtract one to move it down. I can subtract two to move it even more down. OK. If I add or subtract in here, I can move it left and right. Subtraction moves it right. Addition moves it left. Kind of weird. 
but I can take this 10 H and I can move it up and down and I can move it left and right, right? Okay, well, I can invert it. So here's my tan H. If I put a minus there, now it goes backwards. And if I do minus two times that, now it's even taller. And I can still shift it up. And I can still shift it to the right. And move it around. Basically, I can stretch it, and I can pull it this way, and I can pull it that way. Oh, wait, i got to stretch it this way. I'll do 2 times x minus 3. There, now I made it more vertically. And if I do 0.2, now it's going to be more smoothie. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so you are convinced that with some pretty simple math, I can stretch it this way, and I can stretch it this way, and I can move it this way, and I can move it that way, and I can basically make this tan H reach from whatever point I want to whatever point I want. Are you convinced? Is it proven at least at an intuitive level? Okay. So now I'm going to draw a neural network topology. I will call this value x. That's a z. <laughs> and x will feed into some arbitrary number of units. These are what are called hidden units. A hidden unit is any unit that's not on the input end or on the output end. And then I'll put one more unit right here. Move these back into it. And I will say that this produces y. This is a neural network, and this x could be any value that I want, and y could be whatever value I want. This is a function, right? x goes in, y comes out. One could easily say this neural network implements the function y equals f of x, right? Okay, well, I'm going to assume for right now that I'm not using the tan h function on the output unit. This is just a linear unit. In other words, this output unit just sums up whatever comes into it and doesn't run it through the tan h function. But all of these ones do. OK? So these ones, I'll draw the tan h function. Kind of a squiggly plot. Is the tan h function, is that supposed to be like a biological transistor, sort of? Um, so. It's what they call an activation function. Um, in fact, there's a whole Wikipedia article on activation functions. And I like this article because I wrote it. <laughs> I didn't write all of it. I wrote a lot of it, though. Um, <clears throat> I made this table. Coolest table ever, by the way. And if you ever want to see a neat table, it's got plots in it and a whole bunch of math. And over here, differential equations and more math and properties and, and uh, neat stuff. And the awesomest thing about this table is that if you look for the row that has all yeses, there's only one of them that does, and it's one that I invented right there, which is kind of cool. And this one has pretty rainbow colors. I invented that one too. Okay, <laughs> there. I'm done showing off for now until I think of something else to show off about. So these, this is an activation function. And an activation function just takes whatever input you have, and it makes it nonlinear. It warps it in some way. Now, if I feed in an uh, arbitrary x to this, what's, suppose we're going to look at just one of these units. x goes in, what comes out? It's the tan h function of x, right? Because that's what this does. Assume this weight is just 1. x goes in, it gets multiplied by 1. Then we take the tan h of 1, and that's what y is going to be, assuming these don't exist. So that, the plot of this whole neural network is going to look like 
this if there's only that one unit. Um, okay. If there's only one unit, it's just going to look like that. Now, if I change these uh, <coughs> weights, for example, if I change this number to be something else, that's going to basically scale it. Right? So I can do 2 times whatever this outputs, or negative 1 times whatever that outputs. So I can stretch it this way and squish it this way and do whatever I want to it. Okay? Um, on this unit, remember, it adds up whatever input's coming to it. So I can produce whatever number I want to add to it. So I can also shift it this way and I can shift it that way. I can get a 10-8 shape wherever I want with a single unit. And that much is not that impressive. I can also add and multiply values on this line, which means I can um, shift it sideways as well as up and down. Okay. In other words, I can make a tan eight shape wherever I want. Well, if I can do that with this one, what can I do with this unit? Same thing. I can get a tan eight shape, a kind of whoopy shape, a letter S shape. And I can move it wherever I want and stretch it wherever I want and pull it however I want. What about this one? Same thing, same thing, same thing. Okay. So what's ultimately happening is I have a tan H plus a tan H. Well, it looks like that. But what if I move this one around? Like minus three. Now it's kind of a two slopes. Um, what about minus two times that? Now I can do kind of one of those. Do you see that there are really two tan eight shapes going on here? There's one that goes in out and it goes like that and it would keep going, except then we're adding another one right here that swoops down like that. Here, let me shift that first one to the left a little bit so you can see it a little better. Do you see two tan eight shapes? So do I. This is two tan eight shapes that have been added together. Um, what if I added another one? 